Hey guys, welcome back, it's Biggs. Well today, today's the day. This is something we've been waiting on for a while. It just took all that time to get to this point. But if you watched the last video on us, how we go about making my isopod substrate, that's all done. Now we're gonna need an absolute ton of it because today's the day we're gonna get started on setting up all the new bins for all the isopods. So let's get to it. couple of isopod bins that I want to tackle first. Now you guys have seen that we have the two sizes. We have the big size and then we have the slightly smaller size, both of which are massive in compared to comparison in size to all the isopod bins we've used in the past. Now there are a few species, when it comes to the larger bins, I really want to make sure that I set up the right species for the right bin. And I only currently have, I believe, three of the big bins that are set up with all the vents. I need to order some more vents to do the other three big bins. But I have 18 of the small bins ready to go as well. Now the species that I want to put in the big ones, the first one I probably am going to tackle will probably be my Hoffman Sagai and some of those larger Spanish species that need a bit more ventilation, a little bit drier. So let's get started and let's do the Hoffman Sagai. So we've gone and added our substrate mix that you guys have already seen. If you haven't, here's a link to that up in the corner here and you guys can go watch that video on how my understanding and my thought process and how I go about making and building a good quality isopod substrate. Now you notice I want to keep this below the vents. The other thing that we'll have to add in here will be the bark pieces. Now uh, the bark pieces and then the wet area at the back corner here, one of the corners. Now when it comes to my Hoffman Sagai culture, you can tell a lot of the cultures that really, really need redoing, not necessarily because they don't look any difference. Now, sometimes some of the armadillidium species will spend all the resources, they'll eat up all the leaves, they'll break down the products to the point that there won't be much left over. That's not necessarily the case for the Hoffman Sagai, but you will notice in this enclosure, if you look a good clean eye on it, you'll notice that there is some die off in the culture. As soon as you start seeing that die off, it's often the case that the, the culture is starting to acidify, and that means the culture is changing the chemistry within the culture. But if I just remove that top layer of the moisture, that is pretty much solid frass, and that goes down past my second knuckle. So that is a lot of waste product, and if that's starting to acidify, that is gonna cause problems for these isopods. So we're gonna to have to get these guys set up and changed over, because this culture I don't really have any issues with whatsoever in regards to uh, pathogens or uh, uh, invasive species per se. I can literally transfer this entire piece of bark over without any issue. Now the one thing that I am looking for in this culture is something that we're gonna to wanna to be setting up entirely separate, and hopefully they're still okay, is I have some solid white Hoffman Sagai, and I would like to set them up separately. But we gotta make sure that we've got enough of them, boys and girls, uh, to set them up on their own, because if we don't, then what we'll do is we'll leave them in this culture for a little bit longer, and uh, then when we get enough boys and girls, then we'll start a separate culture, because I only have found a couple of them so far. Now this, this mix, this substrate mix that we made up, we made it and it's dry. So I am going to have to moisten it down slightly, but because we are dealing with a drier species, I don't want to go and do that. And that is pretty much the reason that I generally make my mixes dry, because that way I can control the amount of moisture that's going to be in it. A bit more calcium. We will be putting a moisture sinks. The addition of some cuddle bones. And then we can also just therefore transfer over a lot of the bark pieces that are here. Just take a good quick look at them. Make sure that they're good and healthy. There's no issues on them. And then they're good to go. Now, by normal standards, I would have more than enough there to start the culture. But the reality is, is I, I do not breed frogs. I don't breed anything that is really something that would require having them as food sources. Now, some people, if they're passionate isopod keepers, they might say, well, you can never feed an isopod. But honestly, truth be told, that's really how isopod scene kind of really started, was people looking for alternative food sources for uh, those doing... Uh, uh, the different poison arrow dork frogs. 
There's another one of those white ones there. So we want to keep those guys separate just for now. I'll put them up in that little tub there. There's a spent cuddle bone, as I've shown you. There's not really anything left to it, but it is still a calcium source. So I treat it just like the eggshells. Bear in mind, it's a little bit thicker walled, so be cautious. My hands are pretty tough from farm life, so. Now, for most people, if you were to say starting a culture, that would be the last step. Basically, you'd be good. You'd want to moisten down those two moisture sinks that you placed in there. But my Hoffman Sagan colony has never given me any issues whatsoever. I've never had any problems or anything. So I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to go through this. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to dump all the loose parts into another bin and I'm going to pick through it and find all the adults and juveniles that I can. Anybody that looks good and healthy is going to go back into my culture. Because as I said, I don't have anything that I usually regularly use these for food for. So I have no need to, you know, get rid of them, we'll say. So... I'm going to take care of that. Nobody really needs to see me digging through mud for half an hour or an hour. So I'm going to take care of that, and we'll see you back here in a sec. All right, so you get a good overview of their entire environment. I went through that entire culture, and for the most part, you know, it spent, took me about 40 minutes to go through it really, really well to make sure I didn't really leave too many stragglers behind. And I got a good assortment of them. So all these guys can be added to the mix. Now, I mentioned as well that I was having the white ones. Now, because I've probably let the culture go for too long, I only ended up finding two. And uh, I believe they're both girls. Yep, they're both girls. So these two girls were going to just return to the mix here. And uh, we'll let the, everything get going again. And uh, maybe in a month or two down the road, we'll find some more white ones, and then we'll get them up separately. So obviously, I moistened down this really, really well. I moisten down this moisture sink really, really well. You can see we added more calcium. We've got the, uh, the, the different cuddle bone. We added the old pieces of cuddle bone to the environment. It's got lots of leaf litter and mosses and stuff like that. But this is a porcilio species, as you guys have seen. We'll put the link up there in the corner for the video directly to the king of uh, isopods, being Hoffman Sagai, being one of my favorites. And uh, you'll see a, you'll a bit more e detailed discussion about them. But because they are a Spanish species, this is, and being a porcilio species, they are not really much of a, a plant eater per se, and they need much more higher protein-based diet. So I often feed them things like fish food and minnows. Another really good product is this product here from Wally Kern over at Supreme Isopod, Supreme Gecko. This is an exceptional food for almost any isopods whatsoever. This one gets a thumbs up from Biggs. Now the spent isopod mix in the old bin this is filled with all sorts of great products for your garden. So what I'm going to do with this product, just so I don't risk the introduction of introducing an isopod that's non-native to my environment outside, I'm going to take this, dump it in a, in, a, in a clear bag or garbage bag, throw it in the freezer overnight, and then it's safe. By doing this and putting this in the freezer, this is the one thing that separates us from being an isopod hobbyist and a responsible isopod hobbyist because you know reduce the reducing the risk of introducing an un unnatural species to an environment it's just not worth it it's basically for this one quick little step throwing it in the freezer overnight solves every problem then you can dispose of it as you wish these ones clearly marked with a p so these are my peach springtail cultures and i maintain about eight of them but uh that's really all there is to it left we top up their water and that's it so, hope you enjoyed setting up. So you guys have seen how we make our substrates. Now you've seen how we go and set up a bin, a basic bin. We've got lots to do. But for today, thank you kindly for watching, my friends. We'll see you next time. Take care.